Good morning everybody. This is Michelle at Hesketh Emporium and Handmade Community Sewing Group in Wigan in Lancashire. Um, this is going to be a very quick and uh, simple video, no editing or anything like that because I need to get this video done for my sewing group. I sadly couldn't connect to my watch so I'm going to try and keep you in frame um, as I know this blue mat and the sewing machine here are in the frame. So I'm going to give you a quick run through of how to sew the Christmas stocking that we're going to make it handmade tomorrow and then I will post the pattern for it as well with a link to it on Hesketh Emporium. So what you're going to have is you're going to have a cuff in a fluffy type of fabric anything you like if you've got fake fur that's really the loveliest but anything you like there's a piece that's cut on the fold you either need a piece of ribbon for hanging your stocking up or you can make one out of the same or a contrasting fabric to these and then it's just a tube that you turn through. In addition to those two you need four pieces of stocking, two for the outer and two for an inner. So an outer and a lining and they're cut right sides together in this case you can see here. What you'll see on this one is an eye which I've stitched on. All of my grandchildren have a stocking with the letter on and that's simply using that double trans that paper that you iron onto the back of your fabric. You must remember to reverse your lettering if it makes a difference. Obviously in the case of an eye it was easy enough but it's so easy to get the J the wrong way or the B the wrong way, things like that. So make sure they're reversed when you draw it onto the back of your fabric and then you iron them onto your fabric. If you don't have any of that, a little bit of um, Pritt stick or one of those glues like that will work to hold it in place while you quickly zigzag around the edges. So apart from that, once you've got all your fabrics cut out, we can make a start on stitching this together. So we take our two separate inner and outers and we line them up nicely and we're going to start at the top of the opening of our sock. We're going to sew all the way around our stocking and we're going to end up over here. So that's step number one and you're going to do that with whatever seam allowance you are comfortable with. I'm going to just do the width of my presser foot because that's actually about eight millimeters. Obviously, the bigger your seam allowance, the smaller your stocking is going to be, but whatever you use, just keep it consistent throughout the project. Excuse my nails, I have been cleaning and fixing machines they are likely to be extremely grubby. My apologies for that. So I'm going around the curve at the bottom of the toe now. I love this shaped stocking. I developed it over many years of trying different stockings and different shapes but this particular shape hangs beautifully and it looks so nice on your fireplace or hanging up on a wall or over a door, wherever you have to hang your stocking, we are lucky enough to have a fireplace. By the way, my apologies if um, you can hear bashing in the background. Well, we're having some restoration work done and I'm afraid that cannot stop for a video. Just go back and forward a little at the top and at the, at the end and at the beginning so that you've got that nice and secure and then trim your threads. If anybody wants to know, these are my snips that I use and they're incredible. They're very weighty because they come from uh, Wilkinson and they are um, handmade in Sheffield in the UK and unbelievably sharp. Very, very nice. So I've got the first stocking done. If you've cut them the right sides out or your pattern side out then you just need to realign them with the pattern facing each other please and then repeat 
your stitching around the entire stocking. If you're worried about it slipping, you can, of course, use pins or clips, whichever is your preference. But I'm just going to make sure that I hold them together nicely while I'm going. And this is not a slippery fabric. This is 100% cotton. You can see this one is the fabric I used to do the initial on the front of the stocking. Obviously, if you're going to make these to give away or to sell, you don't want to put initials on them unless you've got a really big market store or something like that. And then you can make a few A's, B's and C's that sort of thing. And if you're any good at free motion embroidery, then it would be lovely if you did that on the stocking. Ending off. And just remember, if you are going to do an initial or something on it, you must use, um, you must do it before you start your sewing together, because otherwise your letters are going to be upside down. Now, I did um, make a mistake on this, and I will go and quickly rectify it. Anybody guess? Yes. For those of you who know me, I have been chatting away, and I've forgotten to leave an opening for the turning. So I'm just going to go and overstitch, and then snip my threads in between, so it can turn nice and easily. So do that on the straightest part of your stocking because honestly you don't want to have to turn it if it's on a curved edge it's much more of a pain to stitch it closed right now i've got to just undo the stitching here where i've made that error and i'll just show you while i'm at it seeing as i have to use it my lovely piece of kit that I was given for my birthday by a lovely friend of mine and it's got my name on as well which is rather nice because nobody can walk off with it now I know I put two lines of stitching out oh, there's the other one there so what I'm going to do is just quickly go along and every third stitch I'm going to just unpick and then it will pull apart on its own be careful when you do unpicking, by the way, that you don't pick up either the warp or the weft of the actual fabric, because depending on the fabric, it will leave a run in your fabric, and that doesn't look very nice. So there you go. That comes apart really easily when you do it like that. So I'm going to put my new trusty picker back again. Okay, you've got two options now, and that is to go around your curved edges. So that's the heel and the toe and this curved section of your shoe. Uh, stocking, it is not a shoe. And you can either clip it towards the seam, but don't clip your seam. If you do clip your seam, just go back and do another row of stitches a millimeter or so in from that. Now there is another option which you can use because these, they don't, I mean, they don't see terribly a lot of wear because they're only used once a year however if you're going to put anything weighty in it I'm not sure that the second option is a, a great one but I do this quite often on a curve I will sew about a millimeter no let's say two millimeters away from your seam and if you do that it will also fold out and press very nicely and you don't need to do all that clipping that's a personal choice so that's the two options that you've got so i've clipped that curve i've trimmed that one i've clipped this one and i've clipped the heel as well where it curves if you don't do the clipping your stocking won't have the same nice shape and it also won't iron that seam out very well so you can do it sort of a centimeter away depends on how big the curve is how close together I put them 
If you have a pair of pinking shears, you can do exactly what I did earlier, which was trim closer to the seam, and you can do that with pinking shears, and that will give you the same result as the clipping was. So now we've done the clipping of both of them, and you now want to turn one of these right sides out. I suggest you go and press these first before you assemble because you won't get it as well pressed on the next stage. So, all right, now one thing worth mentioning when you're making your stockings, if you're making them for an entire family, don't do what I did and make them over, when you make them over many years like I did with all the grandchildren, I somehow by luck got them all facing the same direction, the toes of the stocking. And uh, <laughs> the last one I made for Joshua, who was the previous uh, youngest grandchild, um, was the wrong way. So five of them are pointing one direction and the sixth one's pointing the opposite direction. So I promised myself I would remember which way to point the next three in case I had three more grandchildren, but I haven't done that. So if you want them all the same way, make sure you cut them out properly so that they're the same way. So they are now pressed and I'm ready to put them together. The last thing I'm going to do before that is I'm going to quickly down this short edge here of my cuff, I'm going to do a row of stitching to close it up. We have a cuff. And we have an inner and an outer. So with the cuff, you want to make sure that it is going to land up facing the correct way. So when it comes out of the sewing machine and I turn it round, I want it to be sticking up with the seam up like this. So when I fold it over, it's going to hide the seam away. In order to do that, I've got to do a quick calculation in my brain, but we'll put that over our outer fabric so that the cuff is lined up. And the two seams are lined up at the back. So I'm going to pop the two seams along the back of the stocking together. And if you want to, you can put a pin in there. This this is the stage at which I would suggest you do put a pin. Line those two up there. The front seam doesn't matter because it doesn't have a seam on the cuff. And I'm going to put a pin sort of at the quarter marks. Only to keep the top edges here lined up nicely. Don't have to come back and worry about that later on. Okay, now we take our outer fabric and we are going to stuff it inside our inner. So grab this toe, push it all the way down into the toe of the lining. It doesn't have to be lined up cleverly or anything because all you want to get is this top section of the lining up over your cuff. All right, I might go out of shot there for a second. So remember we lined up the two side seams already. Now we're just going to pop the third one there as well. The cuff is now sandwiched between. I'm going to pull up the outer it's not the outer, sorry, I'm going to pull up the lining, just take the pin out and reposition it. 
Now, like this one, fabrics stretch differently. So you've got to be really careful when you do this because actually my seam allowances might just be a tiny bit off because I've got a little bit of this ruching here. So what I'm going to do is just give this a little tug. I'm going to take that pin out so it can stretch across the entire diameter of the circle. So I'll pull it until everything fits a little bit more evenly and flat and then I put a pin in there and I pop my pin back here. Only thing to do now before you forget it is this. If you do happen to forget it you just have to hand stitch it or unpick a tiny little bit of this in order to get this in the right place. So we take our ribbon, fold it in half, and you pop your tab between your outer and your fluffy top and you pin that in place so that it just sticks out. Okay, can you see that? I've just got the sticking out. Now the rest of your tail is in there and pin across there because you're going to just sew all the way around. Now what we do, we've got our three layers. We've got our inner layer facing our right side layer and we've got the fluffy bit in between. Okay, so two right sides are together. Fluffy bit in the middle. And let's see if I've got this in the right place. Start anywhere you like and you're going to sew all the way around also with a one centimeter or whatever you like seam allowance i'm going to start at the heat at the back of the foot and catch in that ribbon before i do anything else same sort of seam allowance that you used before keep your fabric from the rest of the item away from under your presser foot. So just keep moving it until it's one big circle. And then all I do is when I get back to the beginning I go over a cup, about an inch or so the starting stitches where the tag is so that um, when it's hanging it's nice and strong. You're not going to pull the tag loop out if you do happen to put something really heavy into your Christmas stocking. So I've gone back and forth twice over that as well and I'm going to trim that. Now the proof is in the pudding as they say. I've sewn all the way around. Get that in there. I've got the heel and I've also got the opening on my stock here, ready to turn it the right way around. So we pull this outer through the hole, turn your stockings inside lining out and give it a nice push through. I didn't bother to press the lining because it's going to be inside the stocking and you'll never see it. It's not a reversible stocking. All I'm going to do now is just push the seams flat with my hands and the warmth of your hand will do much of that for you. So this looks a little odd, doesn't it? You now have what looks like a fairly complete stocking over there but with this <laughs> all you're going to do is stitch this closed and I do that on the machine because it is not visible on the outside because this is my lining and that's the reason we do the hole for turning on the lining and we just do a little straight stitch all the way down to close up that hole yeah the, if you don't do that you're going to lose sweets or toys into your lining i've closed that up now 
could neaten it up a little. I don't like it with little bits of stuff, even if I know it's going to be hidden. So that's now ready to turn. Um, I've turned it, sorry, but it's now ready to stuff inside. So all we're going to do is open up your outer and push your inside lining into the boot. And this is why it's important for you to get your stockings facing the right way. So cut them the right way so that when it comes to doing this, your toes are facing the same direction. And that, dearies, is the end of that. One beautifully handmade double lined Christmas stocking to hang on your fireplace or your door. You can make this exact same pattern. You can copy it and reduce it down and make it into miniature stockings, which you can then put 24 up if you want and use them as an advent calendar on a string. But there you go. Happy sewing. Hope you enjoy making your very own Christmas stockings.